Alan Kerr, Ray Knight, and Dan Colco joining us here in the booth. And you look at the big headlines today, guys. Of course, Steven Strasburg is back starting. Steven Drew returns as well. But Dan, wanted to start with you. Strasburg, what does it mean to the team to have their big ace starting again? It's huge. Dusty Baker said it yesterday. You want to have your big three as you go down the stretch here into September and October. Obviously talking about Steven Strasburg, Max Scherzer, and Tanner Roark. So the Nationals have been looking forward to getting Steven Strasburg back for a couple of weeks now. And the keys, I think, what they're looking for tonight is for him to, in a broad sense, look like he did in the first four months of the season when he was, you know, so dominant and didn't have a loss for the longest stretch. But in a more particular sense, Dusty Baker saying today he really wants to see Strasburg let it out to really attack hitters in terms of his uh, motion towards the plate, to not feel like he's kind of easing off a little bit. So it kind of remains to be seen what Steven will bring tonight, but they just want to see the same healthy Steven Strasburg that they saw early on in the season and really attacking hitters from a physical point of view. Yeah, I think that's all great points, man. I, I think that if he's healthy, and I don't think he'd be out there unless he's healthy, you're going to see the same Steven Strasburg. He may a little be, be a little rusty with his breaking ball. I think he can throw his fastball pretty much where he wants to. Um, one thing about when you're really tender, you lose your release point, and I think that's what happened with him, because his velocity never came down. He still was throwing the ball 95 miles an hour, even those three starts that he struggled with, but he wasn't getting the ball to the edges of the plate, and his breaking ball wasn't quite as sharp. So now, with that tenderness gone, he's going to be fresh. I mean, golly, this time of the year to take three weeks off, and the weather's starting to cool down, it's just like the start of the season for him. He's going to have that great adrenaline rush, and uh, I just think he's so good that he's going to be able to go back out there, get in rhythm. I don't really look for more than five innings tonight, do you? I, I don't think you're going to get much No real need that. to push him, right? Right. right. No, right. Need, no need to have him go seven or eight. Right. I'd like to see him go five innings and, and uh, us be up and him come out of there and get a win and then look forward to his next start and let him build up gradually because with the lead we have, I think we can afford to do that. And what's interesting about Strauss as well as, you know, 2012, he didn't get a chance to go past a certain day in September. And you look at his split over his career, 8-3 and three, with a 2.02 earned run average in September. This is where he wants to be. He's he's worked his entire career to be in a pennant race in September, and he'd love to be strong at this moment. Well, he will be strong, and barring any setbacks, he's going to be a whole handful for these other teams when we get in the playoffs. Uh, like the idea of the three guys, bam, 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 uh, they're all different pitchers, but they can all shut you down. And when you think of them individually, Visually, they're pretty impressive, but when you think of them as, as a group, sometimes that may seem insurmountable to some ball clubs because you don't get a breather. You have three starters that all are, are outstanding pitchers, all going to push 16, 17 wins this year with low earn run averages, right. and that's quite a challenge for another team. Well, you look at the next bit of news for the Nationals, and it's Stephen Drew returning, and he is an important cog in this success this year, Dan. What's more important for Dusty? Baker, the fact that he's such a great hitter or the fact that he's such a great defender to sub in for guys like Anthony Rendon? I would say it's kind of everything to take an easy way out here, but there, there's a lot of aspects that Stephen Drew brings. Uh, on the field, you're talking about him potentially being able to give Anthony Rendon a day off, Daniel Murphy a day off, Danny Espinosa a day off. He's a veteran infielder who can play multiple spots. So from that sense, he's huge in for versatility off the bench. Also, his production, seven home runs on the season in very limited at bats. He's hitting 300 as a pinch hitter from the left side. That's important in a major way. And then you look at his presence off the field and this might be something that fans aren't really aware of. Stephen Drew is, as you get to know him a little more, he's sneaky hilarious and he's yeah. great in that clubhouse. Players love him and he provides just a, an added element inside that room Ray and you know how important that could be in terms of overall clubhouse chemistry so it's it's his versatility, it's his impact when he is on the field and it's his impact in the clubhouse as well. He's a very big part of this team for a guy who hasn't gotten in a ton of games this year. Ray you look at the what Stephen Drew provides for Dusty Baker and Dan alluded to it that depth you see a lot of double switches they've got 37 players they can use a ton of relievers what how does it help Dusty in the way he maneuvers during a game to have Drew in his lineup as a possibility well he mentioned all the um, attributes of a player that can do a lot of things the versatility 
the options that you have. Being able to double switch, put him in a defensive position that you don't lose anything. I, I think he's been the most valuable player off of this bench. You, we've lost him. You know when you lose him, you lose that punch off the off the left-handed side. But you also lose that ability to, to rest your infielders and not lose a lot, especially against tough right-handed pitchers. Uh, you, you've got right-handed hitters at, at uh, at third and at first. Uh, you can flip-flop guys around. He can play all four infield positions. He runs uh, average. He's not going to hurt you on the bases. And uh, and the fact that he adds levity in that clubhouse may be the, the biggest thing. He is some kind of baseball player. He's played this year like an everyday player. And I think in his mind, he still thinks he is an everyday player. He's been very consistent, very, very smart. Extremely smart player. Uh, was a great shortstop and big run producer out there in Arizona and uh, he has been as good as you can be off the bench for a ball club and it gives you so much maneuverability as a manager uh, it, it's one of those feelings that you have right there somebody that you can turn to that's got you covered in any situation. Well you look at the NLE standings for the Nationals and the teams that are chasing him and of course the New York Mets are starting to try to make a little bit of a move but it's still an eight game lead and Dan a question for you you look back to the series in New York where the Mets won one, two out of three. It, it almost had felt before that the Nationals were feeling pretty good about where they were. What's the vibe in the clubhouse? They still have some games left with the Mets. Do they think that it's still a race? Are they worried about what's going on in the rest of the division? They're taking it very much day by day, Byron, and it's such a cliche answer. It's a cliche approach, but it's one that you need to have at this point in the season. That eight-game cushion is significant enough that you don't really need to worry about things on a day-to-day -day level. I, I was talking with someone a little bit earlier saying that you, you're around the ball club today. It feels like it could be a June ball game just because it doesn't feel any different than it did earlier on in the season. I think Dusty Baker loves that. He's ready for his players to kind of kick things into high gear a little bit, but in terms of how the, the vibe of the clubhouse is right now, to me, it's the same that it's been all year. Ray, as a, experience as a manager, and you're in this situation where you have a big lead in September, and everybody's counting down magic numbers and things like that. Your veteran players, your Jason Wirth, your Ryan Zimmermans, what's it like in the clubhouse for them to keep going going to keep battling even though you feel like you've got this and you're trying to get ready for the postseason? Well, I don't think they feel like they've got this. I, I, I never did. and We had big leads on ball clubs that I played with. Uh, but you know you have a comfortable lead, as Danny said. You've got a comfortable lead, but you've got to keep pressing. you got to keep going, not pressing mentally, but pressing forward and continue to fight and go out there every night and play baseball the way you've played all year long. You don't change anything. You are able to go to the manager when you're a veteran player and say, Skip, uh, I'd like to have tomorrow off or I'd like to have Thursday off or I don't hit this guy particularly well. I'd like to have that day off uh, when you feel a little sore. And Dusty's the kind of manager that he'll listen to that. Uh, he is always so prepared in putting that lineup up out there and telling you in the clubhouse you're playing tomorrow. But as a veteran player, especially down the stretch, the key is to stay healthy, but yet make sure that you get rested and, and you get rid of anything that you're nicked up a little bit. Everybody's nicked up a little bit this time of year. But it's a great place to be. Uh, I look, if we go 12 and 12 with the 24 games we play, then the Mets have to go 20 and 3 just to tie us. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty amazing. It's a big mountain, but you're right. You've got to keep going.